a couple of weeks ago, you remember, we said, what does love look like? And we did a long scripture search because the example of what love is like was whom? Final exam time, you know, we're near the end. Right. It's Christ, yes. You want, to, you want to understand what love is really like so that you can extend it to each other. Uh, you look at the life of Christ and you look at everything that he did that demonstrated his love and how he carried that love out to us. Uh, as we, as we conclude today and next week, we're looking at uh, something we've been talking about that which uh, will drive us crazy in our relationships with husbands and wife. We're looking at that which will take that and stop that crazy cycle and, and put, some, uh, put some energy back into. Now, you know, when we use terms like this, or if they're not biblical words, you understand that. Those are man-made words. And when we talk about an energy cycle, that's a man-made word. Uh, and then we have two acrostics, one today and one next week, and, and that's it. <laughs> then we'll be done. And what, they, what these are is a little more meat on the skeleton uh, today of, of how men should love their wives. How men should love their wives. And next week is how women should respect their husband. And it, it amounts to, again, a little digging a little further in 1 Peter 3, 7, where you dwell with your wife with understanding. Understanding is on the board. You see that today. It's, it's one of those areas that way. And so we're just expanding, but it's a little more meat on. And there are things here for you to understand, for you to understand today. With that in mind, you remember that last week, we I think we started on the acrostic with C. There is no magic in the acrostic. It's just, help, it's just a key to help you remember. It's like there are no ABCs of marriage either that do this, 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 and everything will be fine. That, that's not true. And the same is true of the acrostic that way. But it is here to help us with that. Uh, women, women always see a husband and wife as a close couple. And so uh, Emerson Agridge chose the word couple. Uh, men see themselves as leaders, but biblically they are the chairman of the board. And so the next acrostic will be chair uh, for, for next week that way. When we talked last week about closeness, and I'll just mention a couple things and, and we'll go on that way. I've waited eight weeks to get you on the front row or to deal with you. And, you don't let me sneak in. No, no sneaking in this time. All right. We talked about closeness last week, and uh, we, we started in the first thing in Genesis where God talks about a man and woman will leave their parents and they will cleave. And that word cleaving is the, is the beginning of the description of a marriage relationship. We use the example of a piece of plywood that if you put it together, you can't get it apart without damaging it. Absolutely impossible. And we use that. And then we looked at Deuteronomy where the pattern for marriage in, in the Israelite family was if a guy was in the army and he got married, they sent him home for a year to begin to bond and to establish. Now, will that work today? No. <laughs> I don't think your bills will get paid. But... Does that mean we ignore the fact that in the relationship, my wife, your wife, desires closeness. Closeness. Ladies are into closeness. They're into cleaving that way. So how can we, when we say, well, you know, because you get married, you go on a honeymoon of one to two weeks, and then it's, it's very quickly back to reality. Very quickly back to reality. Have a job in so many of our homes. We have two working folks in the home, and boy, you're going like that, and schedules just start going crazy, and everything like that, and, and you know, how can I work on this closeness when I'm bringing in this person from this background, and all that baggage, not necessarily bad baggage, but it's baggage, and he's coming from a different home where he's been for 18 to 20 some years, and putting it together, and, and, and the lady strives for closeness. Men, pay attention. Your wife wants closeness. We're not talking about geographic closeness of how tight you can sit to them, the closeness of heart and emotion that way. And you cannot stay home for a year to build a bond. So your first moments in the morning and your first moments when you arrive back home are extremely important. Now think of it in terms of first moments, first moments. That's not biblical. That's not in anybody's book. That popped out of my mind. I'm only good for two words, and I've shot it that way. First
first moments, first moments. We've gone over this many times. Very early in the morning, guys, your wife should hear what words? What's for breakfast? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, there's a pass-fail in this class. So he and I will be all alone for the next 10 weeks while he retakes it. Yeah. Right, yeah, that way. What's for breakfast? And the response is, get your own. <laughs> the first, first word, somewhere in those first words, she needs to know, I love you. Now, one of the rarest things in the world is, is, is for Belle to be under. She's never under. And always she's laying on her side in the morning. I just lay my hand on her hip, and pretty soon one eyeball appears. And look at that. And this morning I went, and the head came over, and she said, I ain't going anywhere today. <laughs> And I said, but I love you. <laughs> I love you. I'm backing out of here. <laughs> I love you. That way. First moments. <coughs> Guys, first moments. There's an ad on TV. I don't even know whose it is. Every time I see it, I crab and Bev laughs at me. Because this guy comes home from work, and they're out setting the table for a picnic or something. And he comes up, and his wife gives him a little peck on the cheek. That drives me nuts. Like, what, are you kissing your sister? Is your husband coming home? Give him a lip lock. Put it on him. Why are you laughing? Because you got this down pat, haven't you? First moments, when you get home. Now, when you get home, it's crazy, you know? It's crazy. Kids, schedules, all the things you got to do tonight. You, you get in a supper on this, and the other thing. Just stand still, ladies, and guys, slow down when you walk in the door and have a moment have a moment together again. It's just closeness. It's a bonding thing. That's all I'll say because we did cover that one last week. And uh, time's sake, we got to move on. Now, the, the second word in the acrostic that has to do with this connecting is the word openness. Ladies, ladies are made for open relationships. You see on your uh, on your notes there that it, it describes women as expressive, responsive. Women are, remember we said, women are good at words, they're great at words. And so they express, when you use the right way. Yeah, right, it's okay. They express their emotions, they express their feelings, but they're not just expressive, they're expressive, responsive. They want a response. They want a response. And so they are looking for not just closeness, and all of these are really related, they are looking for openness. They want your life to be open to them. This is going to pay positive results. This is, this is going to help your relationship immensely if you are open. Now, you know from what's been said over the weeks that we had a, a period in time where we had to rebuild our marriage, and one of the first things, one of the first things we agreed to was total transparency another word for openness total transparency if it's in our heart if it's in our head if it's in our mind if it's on the end of our tongue and we can say it in the right way we have to say it to each other we have to say it to each other and men if you're cultivating your relationship with your wife you must understand that they need openness but if they're expressive, responsive, that means you are going to have to, what guys? Talk. Talk, thank you, you got it. You're going to have to talk to your wife. Now for me, I think that's the greatest thing in the world. For some of my friends, they don't even know how to do it. You know, but a woman is built for closeness and she's built for openness that way. Go back to the to use an earthly illustration, and we'll look at some scripture. Uh, string of Christmas tree lights, a hundred Christmas tree lights, and go back a few years, okay, before the modern Christmas tree lights, and one bulb goes out. Go ahead, complete it. They all go out. That's your wife. One area that you're pressing on her airline of love. Etc. Poop. Poop. I don't know. Poop. <laughs> 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 Poop. 
They all go out. Get out there, man. That's the thing. <laughs> Poof. A, a lady is built like if one light goes out, they're all light. Go out. Men, stop on one light. Hey, got 99. Still doing good. You know, and they'll leave that Christmas tree until it's got only 27 burning and, you know, 60 degree burn up. And bother them at all. That's a difference in the way they're made. That's a good description of how man and woman is made. One light bulb out on the string of Christmas tree, they're all out. For a guy, one out, big deal. 99 are still working as far as he's concerned. And that, that goes with this, this whole, the whole broad brush we've been painting as ladies, ladies remember everything and they relate everything together. They relate everything together. And men have each little compartment. And, okay, we're done with that and close the door. And that is hard to deal with that way. And so, and so we got to open us. Now, go to Song of Solomon, and there are several references today we are using in Song of Solomon. And chapter two, please. And as, as the bride in Song of Solomon begins to speak, she's a very wise woman. She says a lot of very wise things that we could take into marriage. But there's a verse here that I, I just want to pick out a portion of. I don't think we're out of context. I hope not. Uh, that describes this characteristic of a woman wanting openness. And it's in the first part of verse 10. First part of verse 10. My beloved, my lover, my husband does what? He speaks. He speaks to me. He talks to me. He communicates with me. He says, arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away. And, and we don't have to read all the songs of Solomon. It's a great book to, to read. If you're married, you can pick up a lot of hints there on all kinds of things. But she says, my beloved speaks to me. She is describing the characteristic of women in the relationship with their beloved, or in our case, with their husband, with their husband. She wants a close relationship. Her cleaving is like never a part of. Um, they too will become what in scripture? One. one flesh. One. One. One flesh. That way. And now she says, my beloved he speaks to me. Many men are like an island, fogged in, and their husband and their wives are in a canoe paddling around the sea. Is there any opening in the fog where I can get to this guy? You know? Lift the fog by developing closeness and openness that way. That is the way to get it done. Let's look at Proverbs. Go back just a few pages to Proverbs 31. Not too far back there. Women like to keep the marriage up to date. Up to date. There's something needs to be taken care of in marriage, which would include the family, the business, the whatever, that way. The ladies want to get that taken care of. They want it taken care of. They want to keep short accounts in a marriage that way. The husband, he floats along. But guys, we can learn from our wife from that ability they have to keep short accounts. Now in Proverbs chapter 31, verse 11, it says, The heart of the husband does what? Trust. Trust, Trust in her. Trust in her. I think I've mentioned, probably only in passing before, that women have a great gift of intuition. And it would behoove us guys, us husbands, to trust their hearts. To trust their hearts. I have my wife... I have had my wife come to me in, in the 60 years we've been married and, and, and say to me, uh, begin describing a situation. And she said, you don't, you don't see the danger in there, do you? No. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? You know, that way. And then she explains it. And then I go, ooh, <laughs> I didn't catch that. You know, Women have great intuition. Men, 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 in this openness, Trust her heart, verse 11, or excuse me, 10, uh, 31, what did I say? <laughs> 11, thanks. 
The heart of her husband trusts in her. Go ahead, Neil. The heart of her husband trusts in her. She is far more precious than jewels that way. And so, men, we need to learn to trust our women. Now, here's our problem, guys. We're all, in one sense, the strong silent type. Or at least the silent type. You know, open it up and sit down and have a long conversation is, is not the norm in our culture. I'm not, not going to blanket put it all on all of you because I don't know how it is. But in, in just speaking in general terms, we stonewall our wives. You know, they want to have a conversation about something meaningful, something that needs to be taken care of, and we should be listening because she knows that by her God-given intuition that we ought to be listening and responding. But we stonewall her. In other words, we go into silence. That's our greatest weapon. But unfortunately, it's a negative weapon, which will hurt her badly, and it will hurt you in the end also. So, so don't. if your wife wants to talk to you, talk to her. Talk to her. And like I said, this stuff will work if you'll work. But, as is the case, some will walk out of here the same as they were eight weeks ago. Because that's work. Really. Yeah, it is. Work reward is a good thing in our life. So <laughs> we go to work, and it's certainly nice that the boss gives us a paycheck at the end of the week, which is more, but he gives us one. We've got one. Bless you. Okay? And, and so it's, it's a risk-reward thing that way. Don't stonewall the wife. Now, a little sidetrack here. We'll be careful of this statement, because we are getting to the S word next week. We'll have to set up extra chairs, move the walls, and everything. We're probably going to get to the S word. <coughs> oh, you'll come. You only come every other week, but I bet you'll come next week. Send him. He needs it. Okay. All right. Men have this thing. I'm, I'm really generalizing it's Satan. You know, I'm not. Just, men have this thing that if the wife and I are kind of on the outs, there's only one way back. <laughs> okay? Your wife's intuition <laughs> knows where you're going and knows what your intent is. You know, I'll make this up to her. I will have sex tonight and da-da-da and everything will be fine. Your wife is so brilliant. She, she reads you like a book and nothing will turn her off faster. And your well-planned thought will just end up in the... In the in the trash, and you'll be mad. Okay, but don't play with this. Your wife is blessed with a gift of intuition. Listen to her. Be open to her. Be open to what he says. But she wants and must have openness. Openness. A lot of affairs that start, we'll say in the business world, in offices, but it's now it's it's much more than that. Start because. There's such poor conversation at home between a husband and a wife that the wife will find somebody at work that will really just sit down and talk to her, some guy, and then vice versa. Some guy will find some lady that will talk to him at work who will really just sit down and converse, anything and everything in the world. And neither one of them have experienced that before, and they are, you know, they're automatically and quickly in a moment of susceptibility, of vulnerability that way. Because conversations, long conversations, bond the heart. Why are we telling you you need to talk to your wife? That bonds the heart. Did you ever talk to Jesus? A lot. What does it do for your spiritual relationship? It bonds the heart. It bonds the heart. So we got to beware. So the one conversation, guys, you need to be having with women is the one at home. The only one at home. All right? That way. So that's a little bit on this business of, of openness. Uh, let's move on to the third one, which is understanding. We've talked about that, and I do want you to go to 1 Peter chapter 3, because you may have thought during time I have avoided a particular phrase. And I want to touch on it a minute. It has to do with understanding. You know that in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Understanding way. To understand your wife is a, is a lifelong process. 
and it's the same for her in trying to figure you out. Only you're so hard to figure out, guys, and <laughs> the success ratio is not so good. But uh, I want to just digress a moment to the next phrase in that verse, which we have not touched upon, but it's kind of apropos in our culture and our society. Husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to women as the weaker vessel. Now, in our feminist-dominated world, they go nuts over that verse. They just go for the woman as the weaker vessel. What are we talking about? In my book, who's the weaker vessel? Men. Always. Always men. Well, what does he mean that way? There's a level of vulnerability, a little level of vulnerability to hurt in a lady that is more prominent than in a man, and we must, we must be careful to protect that vulnerability. If you were stronger, guys, if you were the stronger, you'd have had the babies. <laughs> and not one of us in here could have stood it, no matter how tough we are. Hey, no matter how tough we are, you and the man will be here. <laughs> right? <laughs> you better say right. <laughs> I mean, you know, look at it. We got shaving and they got childbirth? <laughs> Much better deal. Much better deal than that be. You know, the, now we're not speaking of something. Some uh, of ladies in the category that they're weaker emotionally, psychologically. There are some differences physiologically. We know that physically. You know, if we had if we brought in barbells today and chose up men and women, we probably could edge you a little bit. Some of them would probably <coughs> you know, that way. So, so what do we got, Bob? I, I read that different. Vessels back then were clay pots. Bingo. And if you ever had something valuable in a clay pot, you treated it gently. Absolutely. And so I, I believe that that's what I was saying as a weaker vessel to treat gently, not anything to do with a person being lesser, is to have more value in the way you handle it. Right. We have equals? We have equals here. You looked at my notes, Bob. <laughs> you did. Because my example was. Let's take the example of the ladies made out of porcelain and the guys made out of uh, copper. Okay, They're both pretty nice when you polish them up. They, do, they make nice vessels everything else. But if you take a small hammer and you just start tapping on the copper vessel, you'll make some dents. Unless you hit him in the head and, you know, not hurting anything there. Valuable. But if you start tapping on the porcelain vessel, the clay vessel, as Bob says, what will happen? It breaks because it's more vulnerable to hurt. Oh, and so in our part of our understanding is to is to understand that God put women here and he gave you one particular one and it has a label on it. It has a little sticker label right on the top and it says handle with, with care. care. It says handle with care. Don't be worried about that, ladies. God knows your strength. Look at the position of, of women serving the Lord, beginning to end in the Bible. We finished in our small group the other night, the 16th chapter of Romans. If he were here, I would tease him, but, you know, everybody did Romans. You know, I had it in Sunday school, small group, and over the pulpit in the last year. And I still don't know anything about Romans here. <laughs> that way. But what, what do we have the other night in that 16th chapter, Katrina? <laughs> I was sure you were there. <laughs> when I woke up from gym teaching, I thought <laughs> uh, he, he had a long listing of people he was commending for service to the church and to him and to the others. And in that group were a tremendous number of women. And you can see that as a pattern in Scripture. There's, there's nothing here that would be a weaker vessel as described by our culture. If, if Bob hit it right on the nose, and that is, except I had porcelain and he had clay <laughs> on, on the pot. And God has given you a vessel that is marked handle with care because she's a little more vulnerable to hurt. And you know that, guys, because you've hurt her before. And so have I. 
Carol Swartz, unkindness, brushing her off, ignoring her intuition, and all of these things that way. And so I, I didn't want to let the whole class go by and think that I was afraid to talk about that. I'm not, because that is, that is a tremendous package that way. And it's a tremendous thing for us husbands to remember God gave us a vessel that needs to be handled with care. You know just about enough, don't you, guys, to know sometimes you just do this and this, right? Because the next thing out of your mouth would be that hammer on that clay vessel. And it would, and, and it would hurt her that way. Um, handle with care. When your wife comes to you to talk with you for understanding on what, whatever's going on in your life, her life, or your life together, or your family, or job, or anything else, men, that is a compliment. That is a compliment that she would... I, I am amazed, living together as long as we have, how many questions Beverly asked me about just life things. What is that? What, what does he mean by that? Questions, questions, questions. Uh, they're not annoying that way, and sometimes I know the answers, etc. that way. But when a wife comes to a husband, part of this, she's looking for understanding of not just you, but of life issues. And that is a compliment. Don't back off on that. Don't stonewall her. Don't, don't build walls between you and her. Communicate with her. Talk to her as we just saw. Now, um, to understand, guys, 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 and the guy talking right now is the worst one in the world at it. it if you're going to understand, you're going to have to learn to listen. listen. Um, any wife in here want to tell me that her husband is a good listener? I will believe you if you do. <laughs> All right. Three and a half. Son, you've got the only half, and you're the youngest married guy in here. What's this? What's up? It's okay, Katrina. But that's good. Beverly would tell you in a minute, and she'd say it lovingly, Larry is a terrible listener. Terrible listener. You need to learn to... Now, you know, eyeball to eyeball. Eyeball to eyeball. Remember we used the illustration of training children? You're training children, you say, look me in the eye. And you don't speak until you get that eyeball. Eyes are the contact to the soul and the heart. And you do it with little children. Even more important that you do it, husband and wife, that you eyeball up. And you understand each other, and men, you need to listen. Why? You're going to hear their heart. If you're a mom and your daddy training kids, you're going to see their heart. But in this case, with us adults, you're going to hear the heart. You need to know the heart of your wife. You need to know what's going on down there that way. And so, don't fail to listen. Now, uh, go back to 1 Samuel 1 8. We'll go back further. 1 Samuel chapter 1. 